It's time for CIBL Biz Tips, bringing you actionable strategies to grow and improve your business. Prepare to become civilized. What's up, Central Illinois? Welcome to CIBL Biz Tips, where we bring you concepts and strategies to grow your Central Illinois business. Today, we have Lisa Wilson, a mortgage loan officer from Land of Lincoln Credit Union from the Effingham office, back in the studio or Zoom recording room, I guess I should say. <laughs> um, if, if you're a follower of the show, you heard Lisa um, almost a year ago, we think. We, we were talking before we started recording. We think it's been a year even more since we recorded with Lisa. So what Garrett and I wanted to do today was have Lisa in to talk about how to prepare yourself and how to apply for a personal loan. So Lisa, you kind of had an, a few ideas of the steps someone should take if, they, if they're if they considering purchasing a home, um, something like that. Um, so go ahead and Tell us, Lisa, you know, what your thoughts are on the loan process. All right. Well, thank you for having me again. Um, just to kind of uh, give people some, I guess, some things to consider whenever they're trying to decide if now's the time to purchase a home or not. Um, kind of deciding whether you should keep on renting or now if you should purchase. I think a lot of people don't realize or don't think about all the utilities, the repairs, the property taxes, insurance, things like that, that are attached to a, a home purchase. So they really need to investigate truly um, rent expenses versus mortgage expenses and make sure that they're ready to, to take that plunge. I mean, definitely it's a benefit because you can build equity once you start purchasing, but you do have a lot more expenses that you're going to be responsible for, whereas if you're renting, your landlord is responsible for. So, so I, I'd say that's the first thing, kind of keep that in mind. Second thing is make sure that you have your credit in order. This is huge. Um, I would say this is kind of the first stumbling block that a lot of people um, are hit with, the first hurdle. And a lot of times people don't don't even know what they're looking for or uh, what's potentially holding them back. I recommend going out to annualcreditreport.com. Um, usually once a year, you can get your credit report for free, but um, since COVID's been going on, they're allowing you to go out weekly to obtain that credit report. So yeah. I recommend everybody go out to creditreport.com, pull your credit report. Uh, look to see what's on that credit report because if you have any late pays, um, that's going to hurt you. That's one of the first things as a lender we're looking at because we don't necessarily want to loan money to someone who is habitually late paying their bills. Um, so make sure there aren't any late pays. Uh, look for collections. Collections are huge. Now, there have been a lot of changes to medical collections um, that have been rolled out over the last year and in the coming year. So medical collections aren't going to hurt as bad as they used to. And honestly, a lot of times people have medical collections they're not even aware of. Unfortunately, um, there are either problems with the billing from the um, medical provider or with the insurance or vice versa. Things just fall through the cracks. There could be things as little as $8 collection on up, but something that little in the past would hurt your credit score and hurt your potential of getting a loan. Again, the medical side's going away, but if you have any other collections, whether it be credit cards, loans, um, we see a lot of like utilities, Ameren bills, um, you know, Verizon, AT&T, things like that. Be sure you get those paid because pretty much most lenders, as far as I know, are going to require you to get those paid. And we're going to have to have proof that those collections are paid before we're going to be comfortable giving you a loan. Um, and again, that's just going to prolong you getting pre-approval if we have to wait for those to get paid and then also um, wait to have proof. But again, that's hurting your credit. So the sooner you can get those things paid off, you're going to start seeing your credit um, you know, increase. A lot of times there are people that don't have credit. Maybe they um, are young and no one's really explained to them the benefit or the reason why you need to have credit this day and age. Or they're of the belief that I just want to pay cash for everything, which, hey, you know, we're really big on trying to keep people from incurring debt. But unfortunately, if you want a loan, you have to have a credit score. And in order to get a credit score, you have to have some kind of 
creditor, whether it be a loan, credit card, or so forth, with a repayment history. Of course, we don't want to see you have debt, but we've got to show that you have taken on a loan, you've used some credit, and you've paid that that uh, monthly payment each month, and you've proven that you are able to repay your loans and responsible to pay them on time. So um, a lot of times if people don't have credit or if they have maybe just really low credit, we will recommend that they obtain a secured credit card. Um, it's where they basically apply $250. It's like in, in a reserve account, and that is your credit limit. And you use that as like a credit limit each month. Maybe you make uh, gas purchases or food purchases. Uh, the whole idea is to wait till that bill comes out at the end of the month. And um, once that bill comes out, then pay it off. But you got to wait till the bill comes out because if that bill hasn't come out, then we haven't reported anything to the uh, to the credit bureaus to let them know, hey, you have a bill that needs to be paid. And then when you make that payment, we let them know, hey, they made their payment on this account and they made it on time. If you pay it off before that bill comes out, when we report that information, you know, once a month at the end of the month, there may not be any information there for us to report because you paid it off before we were able to send a bill out, if that makes sense. Yep. So there are ways to build your credit. So that's why it's very important. Check your credit score, check your credit. And first thing is make sure you're getting your credit in place um, to where you know that you are capable of, of getting a loan. Right now, most loans, you need about a 620 or higher credit score. Needless to say, there are some higher risk loans. Maybe you can go as low as 580, but you're going to pay higher interest rates and maybe some additional points. Um, anything like over 680 and higher, you're going to get your best rates and it's going to, you're going to be in position to uh, probably get the best options as far as loans. So again, make sure your credit score, if you can, 680 or higher to have the best options. Great. Very nice. Man, she, how much more do you need to go over? I know, like, <laughs> yeah, no kidding. I can regurgitate this whole credit stuff forever. I just recently got certified as a certified, um, uh, credit financial counselor for the credit union. Um, so I'm great. pretty excited about that. So I figured it would just help with the whole education process of helping yeah. people um, you know, get prepared for a mortgage. But there's just so much that goes in that credit piece. It is like, yeah. to me, one of the most important pieces of this entire yeah. process. So yeah. first steps, identify credit, try yes. to get an idea of, you know, other budgeting things besides just the home itself, correct? Correct, correct. Right. Make sure you truly know what kind of expenses you're going to be facing in the future. Because once you buy that home, you can't just move out and just throw your hands up and say, oh, I don't want to pay these bills. You know, it's mm -hmm. not that easy, as we all understand. Yeah. Um, right. So you got to be prepared to be able to make those unexpected expenses. So sure. you need to have that nest egg or at least some money in the, in the bank account um, so that you can pay for some of those unforeseen yeah circumstances. Great. I, yeah. I do have one more question that kind of goes yes. along with this. So <laughs> I hear of loan officers that get frustrated sometimes when someone's getting ready to apply for a loan mm -hmm. and the individual or couple, whoever happens to be, they switch jobs or they purchase a vehicle. So is what happens if, if those situations occur and you're pre preparing to apply for a loan? That is a very good point. Um, we always tell people, as soon as you are ready to apply for a loan, do not make any changes with your credit, first of all. Don't apply for credit. Don't get any extra loans. Don't uh, miss a payment because your credit will be ran within 10 days of that closing. And if mm -hmm. anything has changed from the beginning to 10 days prior to your closing, if anything's changed at all, that could throw your whole debt to income ratio out the door. Mm -hmm. um, the government says it's all government driven is what people need to understand. They're the ones that dictate the thresholds as far as what your monthly gross debt to income ratio can be. We look at your gross income um, and then we look at your debt. And with the debt, we are looking at potential mortgage, insurance and taxes, any loan payments, any installment loans, obviously, any credit cards, revolving line of credit, those things right there. So potentially mortgage, insurance, taxes, and anything would be on a credit report pretty much. 
Those things typically cannot be more than 43% maximum of your gross debt to income ratio. We prefer it down by 30, down to 36, but 43 is the max. So if you look at what your gross income is before any taxes and things are taken out, make sure that that debt's not more than 43% of that gross. Um, so as you can see, people a lot of times are teetering right around that 41, 42%. Yeah. So if you all of a sudden take out a credit card because you want to go buy new furniture for this house or, you know, you take you want to go buy a new car, that could throw that debt to income ratio off if those if your payments go up and that could be enough to throw you out of a loan. You could literally um, be denied up until closing until you sign those documents. Wow. If anything changes with your debt to income ratio or your credit, um, it could basically deny that loan for you and you may not close. So, so if you decide to make a purchase in the middle, the best thing to do is consult with you prior. Yes. Now, yes, I have had that situation where I've had the gentleman come to me and he's like, I know you told me not to do anything, but my car just quit on me. I've got to get a new car. So we ran the numbers and, you know, luckily I was able to kind of tell him, okay, here's your wiggle room. If sure. you can keep your payment around this amount, that'll keep you under your 43%. But you're correct. Consult your loan officer if an emergency or something really important needs to happen so they can tell you whether or not you've got some room. Because as soon as we know that, we've got to document that. I'm now going to have to get information about that loan, add it into the, the loan application, add it into the debt to income ratio, make sure everything's documented correctly um, before we close. We don't want these surprises at the very end, but you're correct. It doesn't mean you can't do it. Just make sure that you've you've talked to your loan officer and they've kind of given you advice as to what you can and can't do. When it comes to the job, that is crucial as well because um, we are looking to see that you have a two-year work history. Um, again, two-year work history shows that, you know, hey, maybe you are good at committing. You're keeping a commitment. Um, you're not a job hopper. So maybe there's some stability there. Um, so we need two years of, of work employment without any gaps. If there are any gaps, it may, you know, it depends on maybe what the gap is. I mean, obviously with COVID, we had to give some allowance to that, maternity leave, uh, things of that nature. Um, but for the most part, two years. If you do make a job change, if it's within the same industry, then you can do that. And then we have to have like 30 days of pay to show pay stubs that you have started the new job and what that pay is going to be. But we're going to determine the pay based off the current job. Um, so if it's in the same industry, not that big of a deal, but don't jump industries, um, you know, like, um, you know, going from, you know, marketing over to, you know, mortgage lending or whatever it may be, because those are two totally different beasts. And the whole idea is, how do we know that you're going to like that new job? How do we know you're going to be successful and you're going to stay there? Because again, um, we've got to make sure that we're comfortable in knowing that you're going to be making those payments moving forward. So definitely don't make any job changes. If you do potentially have an opportunity, talk to your loan officer and they can tell you whether or not you can go ahead and do it or whether you need to wait until after you close that loan. What you do after the day you close the loan, we don't care because we'll never go back and underwrite. You do whatever you want. Just pay yeah. your bill. You know? Just pay it, so, right? Exactly. Yeah. So if it's a matter of waiting a couple of weeks to make that job change, so be it. Sure one you big so one that I get a lot of times is self-employed. Self-employed is a huge one that a lot of people don't understand how we have to calculate the income. You know, with the W-2 wage earner, all we have to do is look at W-2s and paychecks and try to figure out what they're going to be making on a monthly basis. <clears throat> With self-employed, as you guys understand, since you do commercial and stuff, it can change. And let's face it, for tax exemptions, a lot of self-employed people are trying to pay as little taxes as they can. So their tax returns are making it look like they're not making a whole lot of money. Well, guess what? From a mortgage side, for self-employed, we have to get the last two years of tax returns from that self-employed person. And we have to average 
whatever the tax return income says, we have to take an average of the last 24 months and that's what we have to use for their gross monthly income. So if you're coming back and telling me that you're only making $20,000 based off the tax returns, regardless of what your books are telling me, I don't care if you're make, bringing in 100,000. If the, if the government just sees you're making 20,000, that's what I have to go by. And a lot of people get screwed because they don't understand that. Um, so if you're going to be making a job change too, to a, to a, like you're going to become a self-employed business owner, you have to have two years under your belt. I can't have a new business owner come to me and saying, hey, I just started my new business this year. I'm making this kind of money. I want to get a mortgage. My answer is, I'm sorry, I have to have two full years of tax returns to show one, stability for that business, and two, to show some kind of income history because that's the income I have to use for qualification. So a lot of self-employed people, they don't realize, but they get screwed when it comes to this, even though they're saving on the taxes, and I understand yeah. that, but they kind of get screwed on this side because of how we have to, and that's yeah. the government's, that's how the government says we have to do it. So get your stuff in order before you apply for a loan. There exactly. You get your stuff in order. Talk to a mortgage loan officer. That's the number one thing. Um, you know, and a good mortgage loan officer is going to explain all this. It's going to say, okay, this is what you need to do to prepare. You know, I'll even offer to sit down with people. You And if you get your credit report from annualcreditreport.com, there's no charge and it's not a hard hit. If I run your credit, it's a hard hit. So that's why I won't do it. But I'll offer to people, go get your credit report, bring it into me. Let's review it together. I'll help you pinpoint things that are maybe hurting you and give you some ideas of how to raise your credit. And within three to six months, tops, um, a lot of times people can raise their credit enough and get some things cleaned up. So sure. it's huge. Talk to talk to a mortgage loan officer and ask them, what do I need to do to be prepared when I'm ready to start looking for a home? Preparation is key. Awesome. Mm -hmm. So all you followers, make sure your stuff's in line and make sure you're subscribing to the CIBL podcast on your favorite podcast platform. Where you're listening, give us a quick review. You can also find us on social media, mainly Facebook and LinkedIn. You can find Garrett and I personally there as well. Until next time, make sure you join us for the second uh, the second session coming here next week. Um, Y'all have officially been civilized. We'll see you next week. Take care. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Central Illinois Business Leaders Podcast. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash CIBL podcast. You can also follow us on LinkedIn. Don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review. It's the civilized thing to do.